Attention ladies over 50, get ready for a special treat this holiday season, introducing my 12 days of Christmas workout. This is going to be a fantastic addition to your fitness routine or an excellent starting point for beginners. This is designed exclusively for you. These low impact strength training exercises are going to focus on shredding fat and building muscle. Embrace the joy of fitness without the high impact, all wrapped up in a holiday themed workout package. Sign up now in today's show notes so that you get these workouts just in time for the holidays. You're going to have 12 days of workouts, again, that you can tag on to the end of your existing workout, or if you're a beginner, let this be the workout. These are going to be great. Make sure you find the link in the show notes, and I can't wait to work out with you soon. Welcome to Pep Talk and Pickleball, the podcast that's here to uplift, empower, and inspire midlife women on their journey towards a healthier, happier, and more confident second half of life. I am your host, Jill Lewis, and I'm thrilled to have you join me on this exciting adventure. If you are a midlife woman looking for that extra boost of positivity and guidance as you navigate the world of health, nutrition, fitness, and the unique experiences of the empty nest phase, well, you are in the right place. This podcast is your dedicated source of uplifting pep talks that will reignite your spark and help you embrace the incredible opportunities that Life Second Act has to offer. And here's the twist. It's not just about life advice. We're also about having a blast on the court. So if you're like me and you've fallen head over heels for the fun game of pickleball, well, you're going to love how I weave my passion for the game into almost every episode. From strategies to stories, we'll keep the pickleball love alive. All right. So this is Pep Talk and Pickleball. Let's grab our paddles and let the pep talks roll. Welcome back to Pep Talk and Pickleball. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm your host, Jill Lewis. And today, it's just you and I. We're just going to be talking about what's coming up, which is the holidays, believe it or not. It is November. And I don't know about you, but I'm already thinking about all of the food that I'm going to have to start preparing. I am thinking about the recipes. I'm thinking about all the baking because I am so excited that I have all three of my kids that are coming to Illinois to spend Thanksgiving with my husband and I, and then at Christmas, they're all going to be joining us in Florida. So it's going to be great. And they're going to be really nice long visits. It's not going to feel rushed, which I'm super excited about. So when this is what, how we have started this new tradition, now that the kids are pretty much grown, the boys are definitely on their own. Our daughter's still in college, but they like this setup too, spending the uh, Thanksgiving holiday in Illinois and then having Christmas in Florida where it's nice and warm. So the thing is for us in November, my husband and his family, they love to deer hunt. So that's what my husband's been doing this month. I'm actually down in Florida right now because guess what? I don't, (laughs) I'm not into hunting, but he is, and he loves it. So the boys love it too. So they are coming back uh, for shotgun season, which is the weekend before Thanksgiving. And I'm so excited because they're going to be staying and working remotely that whole week between uh, deer season, their little deer camp that they have and Thanksgiving. So I get them for over a week at Thanksgiving. And of course my daughter, she'll get off for her Thanksgiving break. And we're just, I don't know, as parents, is there anything better than when all of the chicks come back home and they're all under one roof? It's pretty thrilling. And then when they come back at Thanksgiving, of course, they love to visit with their friends. And that seems to be a big time for small town USA for kids to come home and see all of their uh, high school friends. So I know they're happy uh, that they're going to get a chance to do that as well, because then over the Christmas holiday, we will have them to ourselves down in Florida, which is really fun. Um, It's been a bit of a tradition for us to spend the uh, holidays, Christmas holiday, out of Illinois. And pretty much because it's a little selfish. Because my birthday is the day after Christmas. And whenever my husband would ask me, like, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, well, I want to not be in Illinois. (laughs) So 
that's what we've traditionally done. And now that we have this home down in Florida, of course, it's just awesome. And we wanted to make sure that every kid in this home has a bedroom because in Illinois, we have much smaller uh, living quarters. And uh, so they've got a lot of room to spread out here, which is awesome. But it got me really thinking about the holidays and the food and not just having kids coming back and cooking for them, but just the whole holiday season and what that can do when you are trying to maintain your health. Maybe you have been working on um, losing inches this fall and you've been rocking and rolling with that. And then you're like, oh my gosh, now the holidays are coming up and you're starting to panic because you know, you've got all the parties, you've got all the baking that you're going to do. You've just got so many things that are going to throw you off your schedule. You've just extra busy. And so I thought, well, let's talk about that on today's episode and see if I can give you some advice uh, on how to navigate this busy, busy season. So cooking, baking, alcohol, too busy to work out. That is a common theme I hear from so, so many women. And I think it's really important that we change the mindset up a little bit when it comes to uh, the holiday season. This may not be a time of fat loss. No big deal. A time of maintenance, just maintaining the physique that you have right now, maintaining your health that you have right now would be honestly an amazing win. And so I think it's really important to not get switch off into that all or nothing mindset that crushes every, uh, well-intentioned plan. I talk to so many women, I get to talk to so many women on a daily basis, and it's very much a common theme that it's, they're either all in when it comes to exercise or eating better, or they're completely off the wagon or all out. And the holidays, you cannot have that kind of mindset because we're naturally just going to be busier. We're traveling one. That's going to be a big difference. Um, and like I said, you're eating foods that maybe you normally haven't been eating. So there's ways that we can navigate the season and just maintain what we have. And then as soon as the holidays are over, you can switch back into whatever the plan that you're doing, that you can attack that a little bit harder and be more structured with it. Okay. So we're going to ditch the all or nothing mindset. That is the first one, because honestly, I'd rather you ditch that all year long, (laughs) but especially during the holidays. But yeah, that, that mindset shift mindset is so important when it comes to your health and your fitness journey. Mindset is everything, you know, having a positive mindset, not giving up on yourself, realizing that this is, uh, something that you're in for the long haul, because it's your health. You know, I have been hearing so much chatter, noise in the background about eating less and taking the shots. You know what I'm talking about? Taking the shots. And and here's the thing, like that is a short-term solution that is going to, yeah, you might lose some weight right away, but you're going to lose muscle in the process. You might be really hurting your digestive system and long-term we, you don't know what the side effects are. It really scares me. It honestly does. And the more I hear and the more I read, I get more and more concerned because I know those, the shiny, um, new shiny things out there. We want that quick fix. We want that awesome plan that's going to do it for you. Um, but nothing will beat eating the right amount of food, whole foods, less processed, getting enough protein and strength training, taking care of your body. And when you just under consume food, you're going to lose muscle. And then think about the kind of body that you're going to have when you are 80, 90 years old. I know that that sounds crazy. And I know right now you don't care, but you should, you really, really should. Okay. I'll get off my soapbox in a minute, but this concerns me that no one's thinking forward until when you are an older adult, when you are quote elderly, kind of, I love that word, but, um, you need that muscle to help you. Okay. You need strong bones. Like if you want to live an independent, 
awesome life. Um, that doesn't end at 65 or 70 or 75. Hopefully that's going to continue. I mean, that should be the goal. Like you want to spend more time with your spouse, with your grandkids. Um, and those years to not be dependent on others to help you get from sitting to standing, to walk you into stores, to drive a car, all those things require you to take care of your body now. Just hyper restricting calories is not the answer again, because you're going to not just, you're not just losing fat. Okay. You're losing a ton of muscle. I want that to really sink in for a lot of you. Okay. So we're going to ditch the all or nothing mindset. We're going to change the mindset that we're in this for life. This isn't like a, a, just a one month thing that we're going to try. No, we're going to keep going because we know that the end result, it's, it's like, it's not next Tuesday. The end result is when your life is over and it was awesome and that you had energy and that, you know, you were strong and yes, you lost fat and you had a lean body. That's the best. There, I mean, it's awesome. Okay. So that's soapbox over, but let's talk about more with the holidays. Stress management's obviously going to be a big thing. You know, a lot of you out there listening, I get it. Like we are perfectionists when it comes to Christmas. I don't know why. Um, who set the standard that our house has to look straight out of a magazine? Who set the standard that we have to have everything perfect? It is silliness. So give yourself a break. I know it's fun to decorate, but don't let it get where it is all. That's what it's all about. Okay. Take a step back. What's really important? Certainly your health, uh, your stress levels, keeping your cortisol in a normal, uh, normal range is going to be way more important than you seemingly having the quote, I'm using air quotes, perfect, perfect house, perfect, perfect cookies, perfect, perfect presents, perfect, perfect wrapping, right? So um, if that causes you anxiety and stress and causes arguments with your family or your spouse, that is so not worth it. Am I right? It is so not worth it. That is the opposite of what the actual Christmas is about. And um, I would encourage you to spend some more quiet time and maybe try to do more reading and try to just do whatever it is, um, do some yoga, stuff like that, that's going to actually like lower your cortisol and help you to just take a breath. You know, buying Christmas presents can be very overwhelming. If you're like me, I, t I go overboard with my kids. I cannot help it. I get every year. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take it back a notch. Um, now they're older, the shock and awe part, they don't need that. And then I get about mid December and I'm like, yeah, they do. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I cause a lot of last minute grief with myself. Um, in shopping later because I just want it to be so amazing. And then I'm wrapping so late and, you know, um, that's definitely happened to me in the past. So I'm really going to work on my stress management with Christmas buying by doing it all on Black Friday or on, um, and when I say Black Friday, I do it online. I don't go into the stores on Black Friday. So I do between Black Friday and Cyber Monday is when I do 80% of my shopping. And then I can get the stuff in if I need to do, um, kind of do an assessment of what I have for each child, what I have for Randy, for my mother, um, any of my godchildren, that sort of thing. And then I can reassess and if I need to buy a few more things here and there. I do love though, buying a last minute little gift. If I see something for just a random person or just a random group of girlfriends, if I do see something um, last minute, I'm not like a, I have to buy for all these people. I do a really good job of kind of shutting that off. Um, I mean, they have my friendship all year round. That's their gift. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm here for them anytime they need me, but that's their gift. I don't feel like I need to buy people stuff all the time. However, if I see something that reminds me of that person, or I'm like, oh, I know they could use this, or if it sparks a memory, then yes, I absolutely do. And I think that's kind of fun though. That's to me is the fun stuff about the holiday season. So think about what causes you anxiety and stress. 
during the holidays and what can you do to relieve that? Um, you know, I think that's, that's a really good idea. So, okay, moving on with the holidays, I think food is a big deal for a lot of us. Like food is a big deal, right? Here's the thing. It's never just Christmas day and Thanksgiving day that causes you to gain fat on your body. Okay. Those two days of the year are not why, or even like your, and your birthday, those are not why you're gaining fat. So let those days just be what they are and enjoy those days. Thanksgiving, I'm not tracking my macros. I am not worried about it. I'm going to eat pumpkin pie and pecan pie. I'm going to have just whatever I want really that day. I don't normally eat like a ton of desserts and sugar and things like that. So those two small pieces of pie is there's a real treat for me and I love it and it's fun and I don't, I could care less. What gets us in trouble are the days surrounding the holiday. Am I right? You know what I mean? So if Thanksgiving's on a Thursday, then maybe you go out to dinner and you get pizza on Friday. And then maybe you're going to go celebrate with another family. Maybe your, your spouse's family on Saturday. And then maybe you have to go to some, an aunt's house on Sunday. And it's kind of spirals, right? So I think that's what we have to plan for. Don't stress over the one day. But instead, be mindful and have a game plan for the other days that are surrounding it, okay? Maybe your Aunt Sally makes the most incredible corn casserole, and you're thinking to yourself, but I want to really want to eat that. Then you should. That's like a once a year di- like dish that you're going to try, okay, or that you're going to eat. So that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying have a game plan. So you love Thanksgiving. It's amazing. You eat all the food Friday, you know, you guys are going out for pizza. So what are you going to do then on Friday morning and during the day? Well, you're not going to starve yourself. That's, there's no need to do that. I mean, you could do an extended fast the day after Thanksgiving. I personally don't think that's necessary at all. I think that almost, and I do intermittent fasting, but I don't want you to make it to be like, well, I I had so much food and now I got to restrict. I think that mindset can be a little tricky for us. Okay. Instead, I think a cool thing to do would be, I'm going to eat on Friday morning. I'm going to really hydrate with water. I'm going to eat lean and green. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to have some, you know, maybe like a grilled chicken salad. I'm going to eat not many carbs because I know I'm going to eat pizza and you may have a beer or wine or margarita or whatever, you're going to be carb loading on Friday night with pizza, then you're definitely not going to be eating a bunch of carbs during the day. You're going to be really mindful of what you're putting in your body with a lot of protein and some greens. Okay. So that's what you're going to do. Lean protein and greens. Same thing. If you're going somewhere on Saturday and if it's your, uh, maybe it's a potluck, you're taking a dish to your in-laws house to celebrate Thanksgiving with that side of the family. Will you take a dish that you know is healthy, it's lean protein or a vegetable that's going to provide you with some good fiber and that doesn't, it's not super fatty or a carb loaded dish. And then when you go there, be maybe that's the time to be a little more choosy um, about what dishes that you're going to take. Maybe you're not taking the cast, you're not going to eat so many of the casserole type things. You're going to do the turkey and you're going to do a salad and you're going to do some other vegetable that's not just, you know, all cream of something soup. (laughs) So that's kind of what I try to do to navigate Thanksgiving holiday weekend so that I'm not completely going off the rails. Yes, I enjoy the heck out of Thanksgiving day, but I don't let that spiral into five straight days of binging. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And I hope that is certainly helpful. Okay. Now let's get into Christmas and and what what you're going to be experiencing through the month of December. Well, through the month of December, we have a lot more parties and these parties are all about appetizers and cocktails, which I adore. However, for you and I, we know like 
those are not healthy. Okay. Well, first of all, we know alcohol is a poison. Um, it is a toxin that we're putting into our body. There is not one benefit of alcohol. I don't care what you have heard out there. The Any tiny benefit is majorly uh, overshadowed by the negative effects on your body. That being said, yes, I still have cocktails and occasional wine. I don't drink wine as much as I used to, but I love like a, you know, champagne or sparkling wine. And I still on occasion will drink a margarita. I usually do more of like my own little skinny version of a margarita. I love like a French 75. I love just a dry gin martini. I mean, there's a lot of little cocktails out there that I enjoy. As I've gotten older, alcohol likes me less and less. So I actually consume quite a bit less alcohol than I used to in my 20s and 30s. However, appetizers and alcohol are calorie rich and nutrient poor. Okay. So they're not really adding to our health, right? They're not really going to add to our good like energy, but they are adding on calories. And if we're not careful, and they're pretty much empty calories. So appetizers, what do we normally see? Well, we normally see cheese and crackers, right? Uh, think of a charcuterie board. You have a lot of like almonds and nuts and things like that on there. That's okay, but we're not really track counting how much we're eating. So we start picking, but a lot of the uh, processed meats, the salamis, the pepperonis, those types of meats. And like I said, a lot of cheese, <laughs> a lot of cheese, a lot of gluten, a lot of desserts, maybe the little smokies wrapped in bacon, stuffed mushrooms. You know, you're just going to get a lot of very calorie rich foods that are in little bites. So we tend to eat a lot of these appetizers because they're just little bites and it can add up really quickly. So what I do at a party, I like to look for the lean protein out there, which is in the version of shrimp cocktail or maybe a meatball situation. I usually go, those are my two go-tos. And then I look for the veggie tray. Those that's pretty much what, if it's an appetizer party, what I'm going for. I'm not going to be choosing like fried wontons. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess it tastes good, but I just, for me, I look at food differently and I think that's not going to make me feel good at all. The dairy and the gluten in that, like that's pretty much all that is. And some probably was cooked in some pretty bad oil. So, I, you know, for me, it's just not worth it. Um, but kind of start looking at the food that way and think, you know, I've talked about this before, like food is amazing. Food is energy in our bodies. Food can, can really help you or food can really hurt you. You know, food can be your medicine or the opposite. So when I'm at a party, I still want to look for lean protein and vegetables. And I was just recently, I was at a Halloween party and it was so much fun. And she had the most amazing dessert bar set up. It was so cute, all very Halloween themed. I just didn't even take one bite. I'm kind of the person that if I get that taste in my mouth, it's like the sugar monster comes out, you know, and I just don't do it. So I was, I'd had a couple of cocktails that night and I thought it's either one or the other for me. If I have desserts and adult beverages, there's no sleep. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have the most insane sugar rush at two in the morning and my heart will be racing and I will feel terrible. So that's kind of my thought process going through it. It's like, okay, which one it's one or the other. Um, but I don't do both. So yeah, lots of those items at a holiday party are going to be carb heavy, fat heavy, but void of protein. So you want to be always think, thinking about the protein. Another tip that I have when I go to a holiday party or any party for that matter is don't stand, don't post up right by the food table, you know, try to move away and have your conversations away from the buffet table, the food table. So then you're not so tempted to just kind of mindlessly uh, snack. So um, I think logistics make a big <laughs> difference when it comes to that. And the other thing is maybe consider eating before you go. So you're not trying to be rude to the, the hostess by not eating food. But this is a, a strategy if you're going to a kind of a mixer, an open house 
um, an appetizer cocktail type of party, not a sit down dinner. So if it is just truly going to be appetizers, then definitely have your meal before you go. That way, then you're not starving when you get there and you're not going to be as um, apt to just grab a bunch of, you know, a bunch of junk. Not, it's not junk. She made it with love, but you know what I mean. And then if you're drinking cocktails, I would absolutely make it a plan to drink a glass of water in between each adult beverage. That is something I've done my entire adult life. It works super well. You stay hydrated and um, you're just going to feel better and you're going to drink less alcohol for sure. If you are going to a dinner party, totally different, but the same thing applies. Just like any time you go out to dinner, your main star of the plate is your protein. And then you're going to be choosing all of the greens, all of the vegetables as your side options. A lot of times, especially if I think, okay, well, I'm going to be going and I'm going to have some, a couple glasses of wine or something with my dinner. Well, then I might not eat that potato, you know, because I already got like 60 grams of carbs with that wine. So I might not eat that potato. However, um, I just got to look at my overall day. That's why planning is so, so key. What I really want you to do is to make yourself a plan, especially on these days that you have a party or something, but make yourself a plan and then execute on that plan. Okay. You got to execute on it. So if you know what you're doing at night, you could have a plan for the day and follow the plan that evening. If you say to yourself, I'm going to have two adult beverages tonight, that's what you're going to do. And the next day, you don't feel like garbage. You get up, you hit your uh, Saturday or Sunday workout. You're going to feel so amazing. Your energy is not going to tank. You're not going to feel bloated. Um, it's just kind of a foolproof way of getting through the holidays. And again, staying in maintenance, like enjoy the extra calories, you know, but don't stop moving for sure. Don't stop moving. You want to keep moving. You want to keep doing those things that bring you like the serotonin, you know, you want to bring you the things that are just going to keep your, your attitude so positive and moving your body is the best way to do that. It's literally the best antidepressant. I think that is that you could possibly do is to move your body. If it's not sunlight, then it's moving your body. So get out there and keep your steps going. Maybe you're not, you don't have time to do hit your regular step goal, but that doesn't mean you're not going to walk at all. Right? So maybe you can't do a 45 minute walk, but maybe you could do a 15 minute walk. Always, always, always something's better than nothing. And you do not have to be all or nothing. Right? Okay. What if you have a cookie party? Have you ever gone to one of those where you have everybody bakes cookies or you bring your cookies and you all decorate them together? Super fun, cutest idea ever. Well, again, I think you got to make the decision on, are you having adult beverages? Is it just the cookies? How many are you going to have? And kind of have a game plan in mind and enjoy it. You know, especially if you think about I'm in a season of maintenance, I want to keep the progress that I've worked so hard for this year. And yes, I could potentially have a cookie or two, no big deal, or maybe not, you know, but you got to decide in a healthy mindset, what that is that you want to do. I just always like to think about it in my day. What am I going to be eating today? Where's my energy coming from? And when I say, where's my energy coming from? Where's my food coming from? That's, that's a little mindset shift to think like, okay, and how are you feeling? Are you feeling drained? Are you feeling not that great, low on energy? Well, then that's your answer right there. Then you need some whole foods. You need to hydrate with water more. Um, so really listen to that biofeedback that your body's giving you. It, it's always going to give you the truth on how it's feeling, right? All right, let's talk about our kids coming home. And I know so much of our celebrations things that we do are all centered around food and it can, our kids have their favorites that maybe that you made for them that aren't the healthiest. And there's a couple of things you can do. You can still make those things and not sweat it and just whatever, you know, plan it into your day. Like I mentioned, or you could have a conversation with your kids and said, you know what, I've been on a, a health journey. I don't want to mess it up. So, and you give them 
like a little schedule of we're going to have your favorites on this day and this day, but you know, maybe these other two days, I'm going to fix something a little bit different, but just kind of give them the heads up. So they're not surprised. You decide how you're going to run the show. Okay. And then you communicate that with them, but not everything has to be centered around food. So let's talk about like, what can you do that is food, uh, not food centered through the holidays. Okay. So this could be with your kids or just with friends, you know, or with your spouse. So the first one would be if you have daughters, especially, I know my sons might roll their eyes a little bit. I still think they would participate would be like a craft or a DIY activity. Okay. So you can all kind of get together and do some type of DIY activity. Pinterest and TikTok are your best friends when it comes to fun ideas to do, especially if you have grandkids. Oh my goodness. The sky is like the limit with all the cute, fun things that you can do. You can make ornaments. You could make, I mean, a million different things. So the second one would be a holiday movie night. I love doing that. That's one of my favorites. Just, you know, have a little, um, very healthy snack is popcorn. And there you go. Okay. Giving back or volunteering. This is a really neat idea to do together as a family. So I know some families like for Thanksgiving, they will work in, you know, like the soup kitchen where they're serving the meals or they're delivering meals um, to people at their church that uh, can't get out and about. That's a wonderful thing that you could do together as a family. I listened to a podcast last year by Shalene Johnson and their family has a really unique thing that they do through the holidays. They call it the envelope project where they have an envelope that's full of, it's just cash and a card and cash and in the card. And you can kind of tweak this, how you, what would make it comfortable for your family and the dollar amount that you put in there. But the card just, it's to a stranger and you just say, you know, I, something tells me basically like, like something tells me that you could use this money, this holiday season. And I just want to, I just want you to know that I recognize you and wish you all the best. And I hope that, you know, you have a great Christmas or something like that. And I can't remember exactly. She had it really sweet phrasing, but you can make it what you want. Money's in there. And each person in the family had a few envelopes to give away to total strangers and you could all do it together days before the holiday or the day of the holiday. Maybe you go to the gas station. Someone's working there on the holiday. Someone's working in Walgreens on the holiday. Someone is, um, you know, go to the hospital. If they, you know, you could give it to a hospital administrator to give to people that are working on Christmas. There's so many different things that you could do that would be amazing. And that's a fun thing for you guys to do together. Okay. Game night. I mean, who doesn't love friendly competition and my family can get very aggressive with this, but I love it. So games are a no brainer. Outdoor adventures, of course. So, so fun going hiking, playing touch football. My, my side of the family loves doing that. So there's a lot of outdoor things that you can do. And then this is a really cute idea. My kids love to look at their old photo albums and I have them tucked away. So anytime if we break them out, they find that to be really special. So maybe one evening you all just, you break out all of their, their baby albums or photo albums and you all tell stories and, and look at those photos. That would be something fun. Going to a musical performance would be amazing. I mean, I don't know about my boys. I Maybe they would go to a play, but they don't love musicals. But my daughter and I would enjoy that. And certainly I know on my side of the family, my whole family loves that too. So that would be something really neat to do through the holidays. Um, decorating, of course, last year, because we were just down here in Florida and I bought the tree like three days before Christmas. And so my kids were with us. We actually put the tree up on like the 23rd or the 24th, which was hilarious, but we all put the ornaments on the tree. So that might be something if your kids are coming home for Thanksgiving, that would be a fun thing to do on like the Saturday after Thanksgiving, you decorate the Christmas tree together. And I love looking at those old ornaments, the ones that the kids made. And there's just so, so many special memories there. A fitness activity. Okay. Don't roll your eyes. You don't have to do a turkey trot. I have had 
Some of my children do that with me in the past. But one thing that uh, one of my boys and I love to do, my oldest son, we like to just on Thanksgiving do just a, like a hit workout and we will do some crazy workout together. And it's really fun. Or might we might do like a modified um, Murph workout, just some crazy fun, like work we consider it to be fun, but you guys do a little, your own little workout in your yard, if weather permits on your porch or in your house, it just, or go on a lengthy walk together. It's really nice to do that. Um, you and your girls and the family, maybe like the day after Thanksgiving, you've got your shopping day, maybe then on that Saturday, maybe plan a day, like a little spa day. That would be amazing and so fun. And then get all of you together after that and everyone go look at Christmas lights. I mean, what is more special? I love going to look at Christmas lights. So that's just some things that you can do to think about. Not everything has to be about food. Okay. And not everything has to be just about adult beverages either. Find some activities that you can do that are just fun, family centered, and, um, you know, just going to like leave, I don't know, all the warm, fuzzy feelings. So I hope that was helpful and I'm looking forward to this holiday season I'm with my kids and I know I'm sure you are too. So thanks for listening. Are you a woman over 50 looking to revitalize your health and fitness? Join me on the journey to a stronger, leaner you with the Faster Way to Fat Loss, my signature six-week nutrition and fitness program. Whether you're an empty nester seeking more energy or aiming to feel leaner and stronger year-round, this is for you. Say goodbye to fad diets and hello to a sustainable lifestyle that brings results. Discover the power of personalized coaching, me, effective workouts, and a supportive community. Together, let's achieve your health goals and embrace the energy you deserve. Join the Faster Way to Fat Loss program now and start empowering your journey towards a healthier you. Make sure you check out the show notes today for a link to get signed up for my January 1st round of the Faster Way to Fat Loss.